Avocado. Avocado. You are now listening to The Young God, a podcast for the gods. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another episode of The Young God. My name is Rodney. And it used to be that we used social media to escape reality. But with all the evil coming to light these days, it seems like real life has become the escape from social media. Just this week, we lost another young black woman to another violent black man. My heart is heavy. My soul is weakened by her story and the series of unfortunate events that led to her death. Uluwato in Salawu was her name and her only crime was existing. She was 19. No 19 year old should have to go through what she went through. I don't know her life story, but her last words came in the form of a haunting Twitter thread detailing her final moments. She said she took refuge in a church to, and I quote, escape unjust living conditions. And I'm pretty sure that that's putting it lightly. For some reason, she was stranded in the middle of nowhere without a phone and without good eyesight. Only God knows what led to that point. But in her own words, she was, and I quote, trusting the Holy Spirit to keep her safe. I'm not one to question God, but the Holy Spirit did not come through for her that day. Twain said that her would-be killer, came, and I quote, disguised as a man of God, picked her up in his truck and took her into his home where he molested her. And this wasn't her first time, so her survival instincts had her escape the house before daybreak. And just like that, she was back on the streets with no phone, no money, blind as a bat, with no idea where she was and where she was going. She went missing shortly after. Ever since her demise, Toyin's photos have been circulating the internet and in each photograph, I see a girl who has been through a lot. I see it in her eyes, on her skin, through her makeup, her facial expressions. They all add up to show a woman who has, who was a tortured soul. A woman whom we all failed. I say we because this is a collective thing. We failed her in our attitude to rape culture. We failed her in our attitude to violence against women. We failed her by being a society that throws away our own when they don't fit our expectations of them. Her family failed her. Her mother, father and brother. Yeah, it came out that her brother raped her and her mother let the family beat on her. No wonder she had to escape on just living conditions. They essentially left her to the streets. Her friends failed her. Where were they when she needed shelter? Why was a church and then a stranger her only option? By all accounts, it seems like Toyin never stood a chance. I don't know the circumstances, but we need to be there for people before tragedy happens. And now, they're all coming on Twitter talking about, I knew Toyin, she was this, she was that. Like, nah, man. I mean, not one person could have been there for her after her family kicked her out. I don't want to judge. This is not why I'm here. I'm just, I'm here to honor her memory. And what really stood out to me about Toyin's story and what separates her is that despite her trauma and desperate life, she kept fighting for black people for black women, for black men, for her oppressors. And yet she kept facing the world. I saw the videos of her firstly protesting against racial injustice in a foreign country. And I understood. In that moment, I understood what she was about. She had been through hell, but she never gave up her power. There's a lesson in there for all of us. Twain fought for everyone. Who fought for Toyin? That's my question. Who fought for Toyin? 
That's why I say we all failed her. Like we fail women every day. Like we fail the girl child. Like we fail each other. Men and women. With all the unhelpful stereotypes and social constructs and woeful blindness. Every harmful narrative we perpetuate. From our parents, to the media, to the churches, to our own choices as adults. Toyin's death is a symbol of our failure. People, we gotta make sure things like this don't repeat themselves. How many young girls are abandoned by their families and left to fend for themselves, ending up in one dark place or the other? One thing I know about African parents is they sure as hell know how to frustrate you out of their home. We need to get our priorities right as a society and promote family values that leave no one behind, man or woman. We need to fucking love more. True love is literally the intentional act of reducing the suffering of another. Why then, why then do we make black women suffer? Now I understand why women lament that our society hates women. I get it now. Ours is a society that, at its core, hates black women. Ours is a society that hates, period. We live in a world where black men are haunted by white supremacists and black women are haunted by black men. Talk about a vicious cycle. Talk about a fucking vicious cycle. Twain spent her life being abused by family, sexually assaulted, and she still managed to fight for black lives, only for her to be raped and killed. Twain died alone, unloved and afraid. She died without a chance to overcome, without the chance to look back at her life 10, 20 years from now and say, I survived. A monster took away that chance, that gift. I don't know Toyin. I didn't know her until this week, but I've seen women like her throughout my life. Women whose faces hid untold, unfathomable traumas. She's not an anomaly. She's the norm. How many women are towing right now? Just the other day, the Inspector General of Police reported that there have been 717 rape cases reported in the last five months. These numbers, while bleak, don't hit as much until you realize that most of them share the same story as Toyin, or Uwa, who was raped and killed two weeks ago while minding her business in church. Dear women, I'm so sorry that the majority of us have failed to protect the only reliable support system we have, the most precious thing that we have. Black women are the foundation of the whole culture, and we have not been doing right by you guys at all. Two weeks ago, I said, listen to women. And that's literally where the fight against rape culture starts. Dear men, listen to women and then check yourself. Listen to women and their experiences and check yourself. I swear to God, when you listen to them, you might even see yourself in some situations where it's like, that could have been me being the oppressor. That could have been me, you know, setting back a black woman for whatever reason. Check yourself because the more you tell yourself that rape and abuse are permissible under certain circumstances, the easier it is for you to be indifferent and look away. Let us do right by our woman. Let us do right by Oluwa Toin Salau. Say her name. Remember it. Let it haunt you. Let it remind you about what's at stake. Don't let it hit close to home before you realize that there is a war going on. Literally. Say her name. And may she rest in peace. This is the young God. Avocado. Avocado.